1997, my two children and I painted our way around the world. One of the more memorable parts of that journey was when we were in the Mideast. We flew into Jordan. We were going to cross over, but we had difficulties. Getting over the border of Palestine, we'd have to leave our car on one side, rent a car on the other side, and leave all our equipment, expensive cameras, painting equipment, paintings, and the other car. So we proceeded to Petra, the Rose City, where they filmed the Indiana Jones movies. And from there we went down to Aqaba, and we crossed the desert that Moses wandered through for 40 years. It was very hot and dry. When the kids saw the water in the Gulf, they said, let's go swimming, Dad. I'm a certified diver, competent swimmer, free diver, and what have you. So I was swimming, and I dove down, and, and looking down, I didn't have any mask on or anything like that. I could still see somewhat looking through the water. There was a brighter stone among the others that were at a deeper level. I dove down and found it. And to me, it looked like a graceful foot. I believe, to be frank with you, that it is an antiquity. There appears to be the work of a chisel in different areas, the grooves that were cut, and that's on both sides, suggesting a toes and a heel. I was to give this to my mother-in-law, Jean Kaiser Radosovich. She was dying with pancreas cancer. We gave her an exhibition of the work that her grandsons and I did on that trip. And she loved this foot. She was into hands, she was into feet. So she really appreciated that. So we returned to me later. And I had it and I just always liked it. And that was just to me a, a beautiful work of art. And I didn't know for sure whether it was archaeological and, or whether it was carved out by nature. I think it's archaeological. And so then, in 205, I went to have my hip operation and replacement in the joints. I did not check the compression hose for close to a week. And this large area of necrotic tissue, people lose their legs when that happens. That whole area, the skin had died and the flesh gone down deep. Fortunately, I survived that. I believe at that time I also had a touch of staff. And the pain with staff is very unique and you never forget it. It's like hot, tiny crocodiles teeth eating away at your flesh and the lightest touch would be painful. But the important thing to me was at that time I became closer to God. I really wanted to die. I thought I was in a state of grace, and I said, take me now before I go and do something I shouldn't be doing. And I write a lot of spiritual songs. I've gone to Lourdes twice, I've worked with terminal people for years, and I was in the proverbial state of grace. And I was ready to go. But God wanted me to stay and do more work. I work with patients who were supposed to be dying. In fact, I had lunch with one who was supposed to die four years ago, and she said, I call her my Jewish mystic friend. She was born in Egypt, just a really bright, wonderful lady. And I got a kick out of it. One time I've been taking her to the bank to get uh, money to give to a rabbi for a certain Jewish celebration when they had the first haircut. And she said, George, you're not safe to drive with. Well, I must have scared the death out of her again. She's still going strong four years later. And she's just a wonderful delight, a beautiful spiritual person. She loves both the Old and New Testament. I'm very much into the New Testament, especially the words of Christ. They are the words that guide my life. I appreciate the Old Testament, and I can see the relationship to the New Testament. But Christ came to give us the good news, not to do what they were doing in the past. He gave us his commands of love. Love God most of all with all your heart and soul. 
Love your neighbor as you love yourself. For people who don't love themselves, you had figured that out and said, love your neighbor as I have loved you, John 13, 34. And that's completely, without any reservations, for all people. He's given me some gifts, I believe, that, and among them is something I call the gift of discernment, where I feel God's presence in the people. I may feel the negative side, but I don't focus on that. I want my mind and heart to be totally filled with God. There's a big difference between the gift of discernment, where you can sense with joy when God is present in someone else, and the energy goes back and forth, and you both are having this feel and the sense of God's presence in both of you. There's something else where they say you should discern things. People who are into discerning right from wrong, they end up being very judgmental. They see the devil in everywhere. We only have so much space up here in our mind. Don't put the devil in it. Focus on God's love. Let him come into your heart and feel the joy. And you'll be happy. And you will reach out with smiles and cheer people up. You will pray with them. And they will pray with you. And you'll walk in the light of the Lord. So if ever you're in pain, offer your pain up for people who are more in pain. When I went to the Lord, as I used to say, Take me, Lord, and let them live. They're normally younger than I am. Well, he never took me. I had work that I had to do. But those people would be saved. I do prayer paintings, and quite often it's a lone cypress, but I have one up here. And the young lady is very old. Kind of gifted me with the concept of somehow that tree that stood alone in the storms and what have you and survived was special. And sometimes you will feel like you're alone. But you're not alone. That tree was also with God in his own way. So be with God, feel the joy, share that joy. Have people, especially when it's their time to go, bring them back to God, to the God that they know and love. Have them feel the love of God in them. God loves them. God bless every land, like the song, every child, every man, with his peace and love. May God bless you all.